Hi, this is a brief lecture about the outputs of a data science experiment. So some of the most common forms of output from a data science experiment include reports, presentations, interactive web pages, and apps. For me, probably the most common output from, an, from a data science experiment is a report. And so let's, for each of these things, talk about the hallmarks of good output from, from a data science experiment. So let's focus on reports first. Ideally, reports should be clearly written. They should involve a narrative around the data, a narrative that goes from the data creation to the analysis to clear conclusions. Or if there aren't clear conclusions, a discussion of why not. So the conclusion should be concise. And any un details or, or sidebars should be left to a minimum. So omit unnecessary details. I think this is probably one of the biggest issues with a lot of the reports that I see. But one thing, again, you know, in your domain, how and what is done for reports, there's going to be a lot of kind of terms of art and, and specific specifics of the art for your case. One thing that we'd like to harp on is something that's common across most settings is the idea that the reports should be reproducible. The idea of reproducibility is that if someone goes back to the report, the report and the analysis, the code that creates the analysis and the data can be embedded in one single document. And this document will help so that if someone tries to reproduce the report two months later, say with the same starting data set, they should get the same numbers. And these tools will help ensure that can happen. And some of the tools like IPython Notebooks and Knitter in R are available so that you can help the people that you manage try to produce reproducible reports. In addition, there's a lot of benefits to reproducible reports, such as the, the documents tend to document the code very well because the documentation, the report itself, and the analysis are embedded in the same document. It helps people think about the analysis because they're thinking about the report while they're doing the analysis. So there's quite, quite a few benefits to using some of these tools for reproducible research. The same set of criteria should also go for presentations as well. Presentations should be clear, they should involve a narrative around the data, they should have concise conclusions, and they should omit unnecessary details. And maybe less well known is that there's a lot of tools for reproducibility for presentations just like there are for reports. I am thinking in specific of Slideify and our studio's presenter and some of these tools that make very beautiful, nice presentations that similarly embed the analysis and the presentation into a single document. And in addition to reproducibility, just like with reports, these have many side benefits of helping how you think about the presentation and you know, archival purposes, many other benefits to this style of creating presentations. It hasn't caught on that much, not, not as anywhere near as much as the report writing has, but still it has many benefits. So I'm going to lump web pages and apps together as a single thing to talk about because I think you could make a fairly uh, easy case that an interactive web page is just an app of a form. And these, you know, these should be easy to use. They should have help pages or documentation. The, and some things that we're going to talk a lot about in this specialization are that the code should be documented well so that when you manage someone uh, and they leave and someone else comes later on to, to maintain the app or the web page, they'll know how to do it, they'll come in later. Or even if the, if the person who's doing it puts it down for several months and has to go back to it, having good documentation is going to help them do that better. The second thing that we harp on a lot in this specialization is that code should be version controlled. And the tools like Git and GitHub and other tools like Subversion are available now to make version control very easy. So we think part of best practices should be executing a culture of version control and reproducibility in, uh, in your management process. Let me just go through an, an app here. My uh, former master student, John Michelli, who's now a PhD student in the department working with Chipriyan Kranichana, he created this great app for the ENAR, the Eastern North American Regional Biostatistics Biometrics Conference, where they didn't have a web, they didn't have a website or an interactive website, so he scraped the PDF of the program and created this website. But it's very easy to use. 
the fields are all somewhat obvious and there's a very clean design. Again, you know, he's not going to win any awards for this, but it was highly useful for the collection of people at ENAR, and I think they try to contact him every year to do it again. Here's another great app that occurred in the data products class, and I want to kind of harp on one specific part of this app. This was created by Alex Lem, and this is an uh, app that maps the Syrian refugee crisis. You click on a component of the map, and then it gives you some demographic information about the refugees. And this was well and beyond, I think, what was required for the data products class. So he really did a nice job with this, and you can see it's a, it's a very beautiful web page. But more than anything, he created some, he was very considerate to the users by creating some very nice instructions and a manual over here to the side. It's, it's easy to use, but more importantly, it's very well documented exactly how to use the app. So I hope in this lecture you got a little bit of a sense of the kinds of things that could be output from a data science experiment, the sort of, uh, we like to call them data products that could result, and maybe some insights, at least some of the insights that we have about what make for good data products. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the rest of the class.